हेलो एंड वेलकम एवरीवन इन दिस वेबिनार वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट रिएक्ट हुक्स सो वी ऑलरेडी नो दैट विद द लेटेस्ट फीचर्स ऑफ रिएक्ट रिएक्ट हुक्स रिएक्ट कॉन्टेक्स्ट एपीआईज आर वेरी मच पॉपुलर आई मीन दीज आर समथिंग व्हिच आर मेकिंग योर फंक्शनल कंपोनेंट्स मोर पावरफुल सो बिफोर गोइंग इनटू द वेबिनार दिस वेबिनार इज फॉर दोस डेवलपर्स हु ऑलरेडी नो रिएक्ट or at the beginner level of react they can act, uh, they can go through this particular webinar and can understand what is the difference between class based component and what is the difference between functional component and what we are getting by introducing these hooks in our component okay so we already know that we are writing classes inside a classes we are writing the react life cycle methods there is a render functions all these things are happening and in the earlier version of react there was a concept of uh, creating dumb components or you can say a functional component because they were not doing anything they were just taking care of the rendering of data coming from the props but with the with the latest updates after 16.2 we have seen a lot of changes uh, we are able to see the react hooks react context apis the uh, lazy loading in react using suspense and load all these things has been introduced in react and there are many hooks introduced in react these hooks are like you can see uh, making your functional component more powerful or equivalent to what we were doing in the class based components okay this was introduced uh, earlier like what all things we have so first we talk about what is what we are not good at in react while writing the class based component because if you see the number of lines of code it's not about just lines of code but we end up writing lot of code lot of life cycle methods are there component will mount component did mount <coughs> derive state from props derive error from state all these methods are there i mean there is a life cycle change and now we have a latest methods we are not using these component will mount and few methods has been deprecated now we have a new set of methods but still we are writing lot of code in the class based component and we are writing giant components and if you see any class based component it's having the class then constructors then your state initialization props initialization maybe lot of things are there right we are writing component did mount component will unmount component did update component will receive props so different set of life cycle methods we are introducing right so confusing classes all those things are there okay so what we can do what we were earlier doing is we were just trying to create dumb component just creating functions but now with the latest changes what we can do is we can introduce the function with the hooks okay i will just directly jump in there uh, okay what are react hooks so i i will just give you a simple example how we are writing the the functional based component in react you might have seen this particular example we have where we are able to now write the component something like this earlier before that you can just write a const hello and and this might be your returning your jsx right this is a simple functional component we were creating but what it is doing it is just rendering some data maybe you got some props in the props you might got some name and you are able to print it or maybe some kind of a list data which which you are iterating and generating the data right so these are the minimum things you are doing now what we are going to do is let's make these functional component create again like that okay so we will use these different hooks hooks are uh, native to uh react you don't need to introduce anything they are coming from the react package what we need to do is just import react like import we are importing components right similarly import react comma component comma use state use effect all these different kind of hooks now what these hooks are adding to our component is the feature to manage the state earlier if you wanted to have a state let's create a class based component put a constructor or just uh put a static variables as a state and then use it okay there are different ways to declare a state in the even in a class based component but you have to write a class based component now 
whatever the classes were doing now we can do the same thing with the functions also so huge state hook introducing how to use the hooks in a functional component something like this so we have a state and set state so this is a setter and this is the variable okay state is holding some initial value so this initial value can be your true false or what set state we will invoke to update this particular state so this is a typically syntax this is a destructured array and huge state is giving us both the value initial state and set state will be invoked to update this value so if you remember we used to do this dot set state now that has replaced with these hooks method set state or anything it can be anything it's not like state uh, data set data uh, visible set visible anything and any pair of uh, keywords and your initial value okay huge state is being used to introduce the state and the same principle is there if you update the state then the render whatever the gsx this component is returning this will get re-rendered and you will see the data appear so initially state is false you clicked on this method set state is like you might be changing it to something set state with a new value and that is being reflected right use effect another important uh, and most powerful hook uh, i will say uh, with uh, the latest features use effect you might uh, remember that we used to deal with the component did mount and component did update methods to just show the change right so component did uh, mount we were calling to fetch data in the apis and whenever the state is getting updated then we were calling component did update to re-render the ui right same thing by reducing those set of lifecycle methods can we just use the use effect so use effect is just a replacement of these set of lifecycle methods okay so use effect is just adding the asynchronous behavior for your react component and what we are doing is in this use effect hook we are we will be making asynchronous call and this hook can be triggered based on the argument which we are going to pass as a second argument in this so sometimes you might have seen the issue where use effect is getting called multiple times because the second argument which we are passing in the hook is changing frequently so sometimes people do this mistake they are not passing it or they pass some variable which keeps changing so you will get a stack out of memory something like that okay, we will talk about all these things so you can see this particular example here i'm writing the class based component now i just removed all the the life cycle methods and i try to put it in the functional component right so this is the initial picture now i just removed all the all these life cycle methods component did update component will uh, component did update all these and i will just use use effect and use state hook and i will be able to do a lot of things these hooks are nothing but just a functions and, and react is rendering them as an array i mean uh, it, it's it's also helping you to get less size of the package because we are not using that uh, bulky class based components if there is a need we can just uh, go with these simple logic is separated and we are writing only just a small functions we are not confused with uh, this binding because we will be using the arrow functions everywhere and every just a functions right so we, we are not going to introduce any complexity here we will just use some set of hooks use state use effect use context use reducer all these kind of hooks we are going to use so primarily three are most popular which you might see in any functional component and now this functional component are such a powerful that the whole application can be written using just functional component okay now additional hook use reducer which acts as a reducer of the react redux i mean you know if you just have a small application you can use use reducer hook to to produce uh, the state in your application use callback and use memo to memorize some data which does fre frequent calculation okay it's like caching of a function execution use reference to access a particular dom element and all these different hooks use state to introduce a state use effect to make uh, effects what is effects in javascript as some kind of asynchronous call some kind of uh, execution which is running in the background so use effect is used to deal with asynchronous api calls and once the data is available make the data available to your components and use effect can be triggered based on the passed argument 
use context another important use context is used to save your context at the upper level in the component tree and that context can be passed to any child level okay when we talk about this context you will be able to understand more use context uses the producer and consumer concept so use context in the producer you put few variables now those variables can be accessed down to any level in that component tree you don't need to pass the props at every level level so it is fixing your props drilling problem so if you have a three level of component you keep passing the props to just reach that props to the child component now at the top component you can set this context and that data can be accessed by any component in that tree okay okay let's go to demo to understand more about it okay so here this is a simple functions is there okay and this is the react component so i i am using huge state and use effect to hooks together huge state is just to initialize some set of users with the initial empty value so this is the initial value now i can call anywhere this set users method once i have that data okay so in this use effect hook we are passing empty array means this will be called once once the component is getting bound consider that you have another property and here and you are considering it as a false first and you are passing flag as a dependency here now whenever you are changing this flag property using set flag initially it is false so either you are getting some data from the parent component or you are playing around so you just have some button on click method here and here i put render again right so what i can do is i can write simple function what i'm just will be doing is i will be making one setter sorry set flag so i'm just making it true to false false to true so if this flag property is changing then again this use effect will get called and we will be making another api call and then setting the users again every time the data will be the same so you will just see you will not see the change happening but actually the api call is being made it's getting data and again it is setting the user okay what if you keep doing this uh, if i do this set flag here don't do this i'm just talking about an example because flag is changed this is get called now again flag is changed this will get called so you will run inside a loop and it will be a i mean your application will terminate right so we should be providing only that dependency which is not being changed in a loop and either that property is is being uh, accessed from the parent component or there is some event dom event you are doing and toggling that flag or changing some property based on that you are you will be calling use effect okay use effect typical syntax is like this and it also returns something right now we are not returning anything so it should be just a comma here like sometimes we do subscription right like you are accessing particular dom node here so you will be accessing that dom node in the use effect but once the component is getting unmount then you have to remove that dom listener from the dom node so because we are not writing component will unmount method here but in the use effect whenever this component is getting unmount this callback is representing the same uh, life cycle event so if you wanted to release some resources or remove the dom events then you can just place it here okay so this is the place where you will be uh, end up having clean up right so we are not using the component did mount component did update all these methods are now wrapped in just one method which is a use effect and whenever the component is getting replaced we are just calling component uh, we are just calling this uh, callback and it will be doing the cleanup okay similarly there are uh, many life cycle methods like use context use reducers use memo these can be covered in a separate session because they are like in detail discussion about 
when should we use use context how to use use context which with use reducer because what reducer is doing it is helping you to create a reducer function which can manage your state and use context we will use to manage that state for the application okay uh, coming back to this particular example i think we can just see the results coming right so here we are just making a call to this api setting the data and we are able to get the data in the users and now users has the data so we don't need to use props.user something like that because user is a local variable and you can use a map and we are initializing that with empty array so user is not going to be null so if initially is null then you have to be doing a check here if user is not null then only do the dot map on that also use async because use effect is a callback so you just put async and uh, this is we are using fetch api to get the data now this is dependency is important we are not making any call and here what i'm doing here i'm i am creating a custom hook right this custom hook use fetch can be used by your application okay so this custom hook can be used by your applications to get the data and here you can make uh, this use effect okay i mean we have a use state use effect and all these things and we can just write our own custom hooks which will be doing the same thing we'll, we will be just using use state and use effect in them and they will be helping us so first of all i think i can help you in writing one thing simple application let's see we are writing a simple to do application this will be a little lengthy but uh, if you can just concentrate then i think we'll be able to complete it quickly so const this is our root component is going to be now what we can do is we can initialize the to do with some initial values okay here i'm going to use use state hook here just keep uh, just concentrate on these pairs because if this is this is to do's then it will be set to do's okay and here i can use use state hook and what it will do is it will initialize my data and data can be just a set of objects in the objects we can have a text okay and is completed false oh, and whatever so this is my initial state okay now in this i i will be having some set of methods i mean simple to do application if you have written in react to do's and set to do's and use effect we have already imported okay now i mean this is warning because we have to write return statement okay now we can just write our common functions or uh, first let's go to what we are going to render so We'll just render simple i will not go into the details i will just render uh, the fragment so you can wrap around the fragment fragment is introduced in latest features and what it does is it helps you not to wrap your components inside the additional dues okay now we can create a to do form right to do form will give us one method add to do And here we can just uh, if we we already have a to do here, so we'll do a map onto that. Here this is how we'll do iterate onto them, and what we got is we got item and index because we have to pass unique key for every child component. So for the to dos, I can create a simple to do component later. And what I will do is I will pass the few properties is completed. Here I will pass item dot is completed and uh, key will be index which I already created and item. I will passing the item which I have. Okay, so this is my loop and this is what I will be returning. So I didn't put a comma, so we have to return this. Just need to take care of indentation. 
text field so let's talk about this add to do method in the add to do method what you will do is we get a new text okay so const new to do so whatever the existing to do's we have and uh, we got uh, we just inserting the new value is completed will be a false initially okay and we'll just set we, we are just going to call the set to do's and we'll pass new to do's here so we are using the huge state hook to mutate the uh, update the state now uh, there can be another method which is a, is com complete to do right what it will do is we will get an index maybe okay this particular to do i have already completed so we just need to find that particular index and we just need to mark it as a completed so this is my to do's data and i will just spread it so we can get it now i need to just find that particular index okay inside to do's i got the index and is completed right and on set to do's again with the to do's i got so i created a first copy of this i mean i cloned whatever the data we already have oh, this is complaining so we created a copy using spread operator okay sorry new to do's and new to do's index basic thing so we have add to do's and new to do's method and we have so now what we need to do we need to define this to do component okay to do component will be a simple which will just hold the input text field okay so we are writing the function component only so we can just do to do and what we are returning from this is a simple jsx so it will be just input type text and uh, we just need to emit few events like complete to do or uh, the value i mean we, we need to have a checkbox this input type can be okay let's have this is a checkbox because we just need to mark it name uh, we will get some item because we are getting item from the parent component and uh, checked input type checkbox and checked will be decided based on if you have done it or not item that is completed Okay, that's it so this is what it is returning and what we will be getting so this is a spread operator we will use here so we are getting item either you just put a props here and access using props dot item dot is completed or you can use a destructuring here and just get items from the props is completed and index okay there is an event which we will trigger complete to do from here like when you click on on click method and here we put item dot text which we got and here we'll have one button i'm just adding that simply okay on this button what we are doing is complete to do method we are calling and by passing the index of it So this is just a simple approach. We just can wrap it inside a fragment. Okay, I hope uh, this method is clear. Okay, so this is what I have item complete to do and okay 
Yeah, so I got this to do method. I think this is just a VS Lint error. What? Expected. Function to do item and this is arrow function. Completing this fragment. Let me change this. Input type is closed here. Oh, so we are not we are creating the components right so wants to do we are not creating functions these are the child components similarly the next component we can create to do form okay here in this form we will just uh, create a simple component create a simple form and here we will use the on submit method to replace it so to do form component here we got the app component and we will be rendering the app component we will be mounting the app component on the DOM node ok now let's see we didn't use use effect so let, let's try we will see how much components we can use so this is how our out, uh, final component look like ok now what we used uh, for the hooks here like we are using use state hook to maintain these values we initialize the to do's with the use state hook now to do's we are passing everywhere like if you add a new to do we are updating this calling this set to do method if you are passing a child component like to do form we have a child component here the form value whatever you are typing in that text field we are maintaining that here and like set value we are calling so you can directly call the set value we don't need to uh, write a separate handler to call this method to update the text field value so you know what is happening when you click on it it is just creating it is just whenever you are typing it is updating this particular value value and when you uh, clicking on the submit it is sending it to the add to do method and then resetting the value in the text field as empty so hooks introduce an, a lot of capability in your functional component because they are giving us all these features we can you can maintain the state and if you wanted to make particular changes like you can use a use effect there is no particular use case for here but this is how we write we write a callback function inside callback function you make your api call or do some anything it's not about a api call will be there only and the, this is the dependence you are creating and what it is returning it is returning a callback this is where you will do the cleanup ok so anything whenever anything is changing we are just making this api call and getting the data out of here ok uh, so i hope uh, these are clear uh, there is just a small webinar where I, where I wanted to cover few basic hooks I will be launching one playlist where we will be talking about all these things. Okay. Thanks everyone. Thanks for watching.